Welcome back everybody and now we're going to talk about vertical analysis. Vertical analysis is also called common size statement analysis. That's actually a very common term that you might hear it instead of vertical analysis. In this situation, every item is shown as a percent of a base amount. It's different between the balance sheet and the income statement. The balance sheet shows everything as a percent of total assets, and on the income statement, everything is as a percent of net sales. Now, why do we do that? Well, vertical analysis gives us the ability to compare companies of different sizes. It would be really difficult to decide whether to invest in mom and pop's flower shop who just went public against a Microsoft company. They're such different sizes. However, this shrinks everything to a common size and therefore we can compare one company to another. So unlike horizontal analysis where we're comparing within the same company, this is inter-company not intra-company analysis to do vertical analysis. So, here we go. Here is the balance sheet of two companies, Company X and Company Y. What you're looking at is, I put a space for data. What we're going to do for this vertical analysis is make everything for each company a percent of its total assets. Now, if you look down below, you'll see total liabilities and equity in blue along with total assets, and that's to show that making something a percent of total assets is the same as making it a percent of total liabilities and equity, because the numbers are always going to be the same. So, but essentially and officially, we're going to make everything on here as a percent of total assets. So, our first line here is cash. To make cash for company X a percent of total assets, we would have to take 10, I'm sorry, 100, divided by 210 and come up with a percent. Well, that's easy enough to do. So if you work that math, you're going to find that 100 divided by 210 is 47 0.6%. And what that means is that of all the total assets company X has, cash, it makes up 47.6% of it. Accounts receivable, you'd take 30 divided by 210 and you would get 14.3%. Continuing on down the line, 38.1 for inventory, and that shows the breakup. Now, what you're going to find is here they do add up. These will equal 100% because these are all the all a percent of the same thing. Under liabilities, once again, accounts payable as a percent of total assets. So 40 divided by 210, you get 19%. Continue on down the line. And once again, this will not equal 100% here because liabilities is only a part of this half of the balance sheet. Equity is a part as well. So continue on down. We get common stock is 2.4%. Retained earnings is 35.7%. And that equals 38.1%. Now you'll notice that 38.1% plus 61.9% equals, as we would expect it to, 100% on this side of the equation. So what we just did here was a single company's vertical analysis. That has its uses. You can look at the fact that maybe you have too much of your assets buried in inventory. It's not selling when almost 40% of your assets are sitting on the shelf and not turning into cash. That's not so good. But we can use this to compare two companies of different sizes. So I'm now going to put the numbers for the other company and then we'll talk about it. When you look at the percentages between company X and company Y, 
Now you see that you can compare these two companies side by side. Which one would you rather invest in? Let's see, Company X has 47.6% in cash, which is pretty liquid, pretty nice. But Y has even more, more than half. And their inventory is not as tied up. So asset-wise, Company Y looks pretty good. Now let's look at liabilities. Well, they have quite a few loans payable out there. 65.9% of how they pay for things, how they pay for their assets, is with debt rather than equity. Hmm, about 5% more, 4% more than company X. Does that make you nervous? Maybe their debt's a little too high? Up to you to decide. And then the equity is lower. So that's what you see on the bottom half. Depends what you're after. Are you after a company that's a, a mover and a shaker? Those usually have higher debt. So that might be company Y. And they have quite a bit of liquidity, so they can probably pay off their debt quite well. I think I'd lean towards Y, but it's a close call. Their numbers are not all that different. But regardless of the size of the company, since everything is reduced to percent of total assets on the balance sheet, you now can do a real business case analysis and decide what you would rather invest in. So now let's look at the income statement. Now here is the income statement for Company X and Company Y again. So here, you notice the line in blue is sales revenue. Everything on the income statement is done as a percent of revenue, whether it be sales revenue, service revenue, basically just any kind of revenue. It is going to be a percent of your total revenue. So here, obviously, revenue as a percent of revenue is going to be 100%. So you'd put that here because 500 divided by 500 is 1, which is 100%. Cost of goods sold, 300 divided by 500, it's going to be 60%. And then, since that's negative, you get 40%. Sales revenue minus your cost of goods sold is a gross profit of 40% for Company X. Salary expense ends up being 32% as a percent of revenue, and rent expense is a measly little 6% here leaving net income of a tiny little 2% of the revenue they bring in. That would get my attention. So company Y ends up actually not a whole lot different. I'll put the numbers in. When we looked at the balance sheet, I leaned toward company Y. It was just a slight edge, but I thought it looked better certainly due to my own opinion. Someone else looking for a different type of company could pick company X and be quite justified in doing so. However, when I look at these income statements, I'm actually not that interested in either of them. Net income, on, only 2% for X and 1.8% for Y, seems to me especially with company Y, their cost of goods sold is way too high. Actually, X is even higher. But you can look at this item by item and do an analysis and see who do I want to trust with my invested money. And in this case, just doesn't seem like a good use of money to me. This is one of the most useful things you can do prior to investing is a horizontal between years and a vertical if you're deciding between companies. So horizontal and vertical analysis are amazing comparative analysis tools to determine what you want to invest in and how you're using your money. If you're running the business, it can tell you volumes about where you're going right or wrong. See you in the next videos.